Hello everybody, Dave from your Arachnids. Um, we're going to do a, this is going to be a commentary video only. You will not see any transfers in this video. You'll be staring at the pulp friction stickers. Um, I want to first thank Garrett and, and Allie for allowing me to use uh, the information that they gathered and their thumbnail picture. Uh, this is a picture that they, I don't know if it's their picture that they always use on pulp friction, uh, their, their banner picture or whatever, but um, I asked Garrett if I could use it for a thumbnail this video, and he said yes, by all means. So here we go. What happened? Um, first of all, none of this happened to Pell Friction, okay? So let's let's start out with that. None of this of what's going to follow happened to them. There was an import that happened two days ago, uh, a legal, a very legal, okay? It came in legally into the United States. It was legally imported, uh, I believe, from Europe, most likely. Um, from someone that's been legally importing spiders, tarantulas, scorpions, centipedes, different arachnids into the United States for a couple decades. Um, in that import, there were T. celadonia slings. Um, how many, I don't know. Um, I do know at least three people that were involved in this. I don't know how many more are, are involved with this import that, uh, you know, ordered these tarantulas, paid for these tarantulas, sent the money off, and these things were sent in. So what happened? Well, when they were inspected at the at customs, which would be done by the US FWS, right? Um, they confiscated the T. Celadonia slings. Why? Why did they they take them, or why did they confiscate them? Uh, Brazil changed the law or made a law two, two and a half months ago stating that uh, T. celadonias are basically on an endangered list and are illegal to import or export from one country to another country. What they're saying is that the first T. celadonia slings that ever came out of Brazil were done so illegally. Basically, they were smuggled out of the country um, and sent off. Whether that's true or not true, I don't know. Now, this is what Brazil is saying. So this is where the driving point of where this law was put into place. So how does that affect us and why does that affect us? Well, we have a law or an act in the United States called the Lacey Act. It was implemented in 1900 and it is to protect um, illegal importation of wildlife, fish, or plants into the United States. So basically endangered species or species that other countries have on their illegal exportation laws. Now we can go and think about Australia. Australia will not allow importation of any animal, plant, or fish into their country. So people that are tarantula collectors or keepers in Australia have to only keep Australian species that are from there. Uh, and of course anything that, that's alive could, could basically survive in Australia some way or another. They can adapt somehow or another, especially arachnids. So they don't want animals that would come there and take over their, you know, and destroy their actual natural wildlife or plants or whatever it may be. So getting back to us here in the United States, how does this affect us now? Well, it's, it's, you're going to see the ramifications of this coming soon. I, I really honestly think that there's going to be some... Um, as, as Garrett put it, I think we're sitting on a time bomb here uh, of things that could possibly happen. Now, let's, let's think about what could happen. Anybody that owns a T. Celadonia sling right now that's in your house, I think you're going to be okay. I do not think they're going to come and take your T. Celadonia slings away from you. Um, not only here in the United States, but in all the countries all, all over the world. The UK, Germany, Croatia, um, Malaysia, Philippines. China, Germany, Denmark, Sweden, Switzerland, any of those countries that, you know, South Africa, Kenya, any of those countries that, um, that are out there, you cannot import T. celadonias into your country anymore. That, that, that's, the, that's it. Now, what does that mean for the ones that are already there? That's the part that we don't know yet. Um, again, I do not believe that they're going to come to your homes and take them. Uh, Garrett does not believe that they're going to come to your homes and take them. Um, but this is something that we don't know. Uh, this, we don't know exactly what's going to happen here. Brazil is really, really cracked down. Why they've done it, I don't know. 
Uh, I don't know if it's money. I have no idea, but you know how Brazil is. Brazil is a very money-hungry country. Uh, I'm not exactly positive of what the thinking of this is. I know that they don't want them taken out of the wild and sent all over the United States and then them become extinct there in Brazil, but they're doing a good job of that themselves by deforestation of their trees and their, their uh, rainforests. So where does that leave us again? Well, the problem is, is that not only is it T. Celadonia slings, but it is also any animal that is endemic to Brazil only. And we're going to just deal with tarantulas. Um, any tarantula that lives specifically in the borders of Brazil, doesn't cross over into any other country, will now be illegal to import or export from one country to another country. Okay, so let's use one of the most popular tarantulas that there are from Brazil right now is the Brazilian black or the Gramostola pulchra. From here on out, no one will be able to import Gramostola pulchra from another country. So any of the big places, uh, Pelt Friction, uh, Erickson's Exotics, um, if you're not tarantulas, um, Tarantulas Canada, um, Tangled in Webs, uh, anybody that does these big importations will no longer be allowed legally to import Brazilian endemic species. Now, Garrett is working on a list um, of the species that are basically totally confined to Brazil only. So let's think about Gramostolas, uh, well not Gramostolas, but, but like Ephibopus murinus, I think that's a good one. Ephibopus murinus are from Brazil, but they're also from French Guinea and, um, what's the other one, Suriname. So because they're from other countries, that does not fall under Brazil's import or export laws because you can't find them other places. So they weren't actually illegally exported out of Brazil. So what they're saying is that every tarantula from day one that was ever exported out of Brazil was done so illegally or smuggled out of the country to people that breed them and then sell them and go on and on. The tarantula hobby has become huge. And I think that some countries are starting to see the monetary value of this commodity. So what's happening is Brazil's not getting any kickbacks from any of this. So let's think about this. Let's just say I live in Brazil and I'm a smuggler. I go out, I, have, I send people out in the forest they gather me a bunch of tarantulas, I put them in packages, I send them off to Europe, I send them to a certain specific person that's going to breed them, and then sell them. Okay, I got my money, uh, I paid my people to go get them, I'm making a good good living by taking animals out of the wild. The person that gets them uh, is paying a little bit of money, but is making a ton of money off of breeding them and selling them throughout Europe, and then over here to the United States, and then people that get them over here now breed them and sell them and make money too. In the end, the country that they're coming from is not getting anything. So it, I kind of understand the reasoning. Uh, I think, you know, if that's what the reasoning is, I can kind of get that. Um, so, yeah. So we have to be careful now. Any of you people that do imports or exports, uh, well, I don't think anybody really exports stuff out of here. They may, I don't know. But anybody that's doing imports from another country, now, have to be careful now that you're not getting Brazilian species. It's the same as Brachypelma, okay? We could not import legally a Brachypelma Hamori, let's just say uh, an egg sack of 150 slings, cannot be sent from Germany to the United States legally because they're protected under sites, which all falls under the Lacey Act. And the Lacey Act was uh, implemented in the United States in 1900, and it is... Uh, protection uh, against the importation or illegal importation of any animal, fish, or plant that is listed on any other country's illegal exportation laws or anything that's endangered. So any animal that's on the endangered list cannot be imported into the United States legally. Um, what I'm trying to figure out is Pisotheria metallica, and there's a couple other Pisotherias that are on the endangered list, and they have been sent here to the United States 
recently. So I don't, that's one part I'm not really quite sure on. Um, so I have to do a little bit of research on that. Um, now, what does that mean here? So I have a uh, breeding loan with a friend of mine in Oregon with my Nandu Chromatis. I am entitled to, or he's going to send me half, probably more, because he doesn't want to deal with all those slings. Um, here, Nandu Chromatis is from Brazil, only from Brazil. Now, the Lacey Act used to uh, be illegal to even export any of these animals or anything that falls under the Lacey Act from state to state. So, technically, before, uh, when this was first implemented, if this happened, he could not send me those slings legally. Now, because they fall under this new Brazilian law. The pro I think what happened is there was an amendment to the Lacey Act uh, that it was they couldn't spe specify crossing state boundaries because we are one country. So the Lacey Act is the importation into the country, um, but if they're here, uh, we could still ship them throughout the United States. I think that that was changed. Um, but yeah, so this is where we're at. Um, and I know Garrett and Ali and, and some other people are going to be gathering more information. So as they get it, I will try to update everybody as to you know, further developments or what happening to those slings that were confiscated. Um, all the T. Celadonia slings that were in that import were confiscated at customs. And uh, they're being taken care of uh, where I don't know until they figure out what's going to happen. And I'm sure that the people that did the importation, they did not know about this law. Okay, there was no way to know that Brazil changed this. The person that exported them here did not know about the law because there was no way to know because they just didn't broadcast it on the news. But I'm sure that these animals are, are sent to different places throughout the country at customs um, so that they know that th when they are checking packages and stuff like that, uh, not just animals, but other things too, uh, when they're checking packages, that there isn't anything illegal in there. And apparently this was sent to the U.S. Wildlife or Fish and Wildlife uh, Commission and was there uh, when they saw the T. Celadonis on the list. They confiscated all the animals. They explained what's going on. Again, I'm sure that these the people that imported them will probably go to a to a court uh, to find out if they can get possession of them, and if not, what's going to happen. Now, if they don't get possession of them, they are going to be out the money that they spent on. That's that's all there is to it. Um, I would hope that the person that exported them would would kind of compensate them um, at least 50%. That would be kind of a good thing to do. Again, I don't know who. Did the export i i do know who did the import um that's all i can tell you so uh i, I hope again if you have questions uh, any of this please write them down below if i cannot answer them then i will make sure that the questions get answered i will send the question to people that can answer them um and and garrett and Allie are are close with uh, a couple of people from u.s uh, wildlife and fish game or fish wildlife and game whatever it is so they have a good contact because they do import, so they know, you know, they, they can call somebody and talk to them. So if we do have kind of crazy questions, you can ask me. If I don't know the answer, I can send it to them. They could send it to the, the uh, commissioner, get the answer back, and then we can just filter it back through another video. So, again, thanks to Garrett and Allie for allowing me to use the information. Um, I feel bad for the people that did the importation. They're good people. That's the problem is that they're good people, and uh, they would never do anything illegal. And... Uh, this was just a, they're a victim of circumstance in this uh, this ordeal. So hopefully nothing bad happens to them. Um, and I hope that the person doesn't lose his importation license or, you know, faces any uh, penalties, um, you know, jail time or fines or anything like that. I hope that's, I hope it doesn't get to that point. Um, so, yeah, again, if you have questions, please list them down below. And if you're looking to buy anything, check out Pal Friction. They have an import coming in. I don't know if they had to change their import now because I don't know if they had any Brazilian species coming in on that. And then once they get that list of uh, tarantulas that are endemic to Brazil only, I will make sure that I put that in a future video and then link it so that everybody can go check it out.